In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A lot of our Catholic faith is to do with how we use our free will. Almost all of it, really. Because it is our wills, it is with our wills, that we choose to love or hate, to do what's right or wrong, to do what is pleasing to God, or to commit sin. It's on the basis of how we use free will, and how we choose to respond to God's grace, that our eternity will be decided. No one ends up in hell by accident. It all comes down to using the free will that Almighty God has given us. So our faith gives us a lot of teaching about how we should use our free will. But our faith should also affect our minds. What we believe should have an impact on how we understand reality. There's a great book by Frank Sheed, Theology and Sanity, which goes into this in a lot of detail. Our Catholic faith should affect our minds, how we view reality. The Catholic faith not only gives us a roadmap for how we ought to live our lives, but it also gives us a complete picture of what reality around us is really like. Our faith is there to give us a more complete understanding of what reality, what really is going on in the world, a much fuller and broader vision than any non-believer has. St. Paul says our faith gives us a share in the hidden wisdom of God, a wisdom that none of the masters of our age have ever known, a things that no eye has seen, things that God has revealed to us through the Spirit. Now, St. Paul isn't saying that our faith is anti-science, anti-philosophy, anti-psychology. What he's saying is that through what God has revealed, we already have a head start in every type of learning. And that, more than that, we know the context within which all the other stuff is, play is taking place. When a Catholic doctor takes care of a patient, not only does he know that his his patient's weight and height and eye colour and medical history. But he knows, even more importantly, that his patient is held in existence by God, that he is body and soul, and that he or she is in the middle of a battle between the forces of heaven and hell, and, this, and that this individual will exist with God or away from God for all eternity, regardless of the harm that this present illness does to him. We have a wisdom that none of the masters of our age have known, things that no eye has seen, things that God has revealed to us through the Spirit, a more complete and fuller picture of what reality is really like. One area that this really helps, something I want to talk about today, is when we think about temptation, why we get pulled towards doing bad things, why we often take a delight in what is sinful and harmful to our souls. There is something broken about humanity. All the animals below us obey the law that is written within them. They follow their environment and their instinct. But with our free will, we not only have the ability to choose things that don't make us truly happy, but in fact, we often find ourselves inclined towards doing those things. It's as if we're like a fish that wants to jump out of the tank and flap around on the ground, even though it's not going to be good, not going to be good for us. But Catholics, we as Catholics have an incredible advantage in understanding what is going on here, because we have the doctrine of original sin. G.K. Chesterton once joked that original sin is the only aspect of our faith that doesn't need to be proven. You can experience it for yourself. I want to look into this doctrine a bit more. How precisely it helps us to understand our ourselves and the world around us more clearly. There are two consequences of that first sin that our common ancestors committed back at the beginning of human history. One of them is mysterious. The other is much plainer and much more obvious. The mysterious one, which we take in faith on the authority of Jesus Christ and the church, is that when the head of the human family, Adam, when he sinned, his sin placed all of his descendants in a trajectory away from God. It's a bit like Adam declared war on God. And because we're part of Adam's kingdom, his country, 
we by default start out in life in the same way that's mysterious it is something that is not obvious when you gaze on the face of a newborn baby you don't see that this little child has been born with the stain of original sin that is the baby lacks the grace of god we don't see that but we know that it's true because our faith provides us with a complete picture of reality the baby has come into the world an enemy of god and the baby needs to be baptized to benefit from the sacrifice of jesus christ which he made to his father to earn us the grace to remove the stain of original sin make us friends of god once more that's why saint paul writes to the romans therefore just as one sin the sin of adam brought condemnation for all men so also one act of righteousness the sacrifice of christ brought justification and life for all so that's the mysterious side of original sin it's the thing that baptism deals with but then there's a consequence of, of sin of the sin of our of first ancestors which is far more obvious and observable and that's what we call concupiscence it's a big word concupiscence but it fits on the scrabble board and it's a great word to use when god first created man whether he gave a soul to the most developed creature that he produced for evolution or whether he did it just from nothing however god did it man started off in the same harmony with his environment as the animals and plants have he would have been in harmony with his physical environment but also with his spiritual environment in harmony with god's law doing the right thing would have been obvious and easy back then our intellects would have had the light of god shining on them giving them clear foresight to see what's good and what things bring us to true fulfillment but instead instead of this because adam and eve fell from god's friendship they unhinged themselves from being linked up with god's law and as a consequence they lost the gift of complete self-mastery that god had created them with this had been a gift from god a gift that would have been passed down to their offspring but instead its reverse was passed down we're now born with concupiscence an inclination of our flesh to override reason and to override what we know to be good for us and this is something which we can see obviously in the world around us but it's also something that many people fail to put a name on they don't have the wisdom which our true faith teacher gives us there is an interior struggle going on in each one of us to get our reason to have full control over the flesh but to make it harder sinful men have invented dodgy reasoning so now not only do we have our bodies to struggle with but we also have to be really careful to form our reasoning properly so we don't take on board those messages that basically say don't bother with the struggle just follow your passions a lot of people out there start telling themselves i'm attracted to doing x therefore x is natural to me therefore god made me that way so it's okay for me to do it you mainly hear that argument by people who are pulled towards certain unnatural sins against chastity and purity but the secret wisdom of god teaches us otherwise we know that those strong inclinations that you are feeling are as a result of concupiscence the pull of your flesh to do something that's bad for your soul and if you think carefully and clearly about it you will see that those movements of the body are irrational we all feel the effects of our concupiscence in a different way it's the effect of the disharmony that original sin brought to human nature we have a wisdom that none of the masters of our age have ever known the tv so many youtube channels even posters on the bus shelters are offering a lie that we are nothing more than animals and that we should follow whatever temptation our body throws at us with the wisdom that comes from god we can be truly sane we can see the world properly we can realize 
that we have fallen human natures that suffer from concupiscence. We are drawn to things that are irrational, that are bad for our souls. Knowing this, we have a chance at real happiness. Happiness that comes from self-mastery by getting our souls to keep control over our exaggerated passions and by following God's teachings, which are the signposts to eternal happiness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.